What's up everyone and welcome to the Elden Ring Review. I apologize that it took me so long to get to this one. I wanted to make sure that I was as thorough as possible with my assessment of this game. Before we continue, if you like the content on this channel, please like and subscribe to help grow the channel. As usual, when I give the end result of a review, it is always on a recommendation basis. If a game is bad, I will recommend avoiding the game. If a game has potential, I will recommend waiting to purchase until later. And if a game is good, I will recommend purchasing immediately. I apologize in advance if there is anything that I miss in this review as well. And if I do, please leave whatever it is in the comments below. Now that that's out of the way, here's my review of Elden Ring. Elden Ring's main story is pretty simple. Fix the Elden Ring and sit on the throne as Elden Lord. In typical From Software fashion, the story is pretty dark and twisted, and the land between, you as a lowly tarnished have been called to, for all intents and purposes, clean up the mess the demigods have made. America is nowhere to be found, and the previous Elden Lord has been slain. I'll admit it took me a little while to figure out the pathway of the main story, it may have been a typical build of a Souls game, but with an open world added into the mix, I got a little lost on where to go. And when I say a little lost, I mean everything I did after the first demigod was exploring areas that I thought might have to do with the main story. It can be easy to get taken into the side quests, and with that being said, that's not exactly a bad thing. The side quests tie in perfectly with the main story. In fact, not all of the main bosses are mandatory to fight and they require a little more digging to find. Your ending will reflect whatever quests and bosses you defeated in the game. For being an open world, I'm really surprised they didn't bloat the game with too much story. Though after playing through this, I definitely wouldn't mind some DLC in the near future. Where do I even begin with this subject? I'll start with the quote unquote controversy of there needing to be an easy mode. In Dark Souls, they gave you a night class. In Bloodborne, it was milk toast. In Sekiro, they took out the stamina bar, replaced having to time parries and gave us deflects, and the ability to stealth attack bosses to help shorten up boss fights. In Elden Ring, there are a plethora of ways that you can make this game easy. Even for as many challenges that there are in this game, they manage to balance those challenges out. You want to make this game easier on yourself? Pick your options. Samurai I found to be absolute cheese in a lot of my encounters, and that's mostly because the Yuji Katana that you start off with does bleed damage, which most of the bosses are weak against. Of course, leveling your weapon only adds more icing to the cake. It's really no different from any Souls title, or Bloodborne for that matter. Next, there's the Spirit Caller build, which allows you to summon Ashen Spirits to help you in battle, assuming you're in the right place with a Rebirth Monument, and when summoning a Spirit, it's going to cost you. For most, it's FP, and depending on what Spirit it is, it's depending on how much FP you'll have to use. For others, you'll have to sacrifice some HP to use them. You can also tune the Spirits to make them stronger with some Grace and Ghost Glove Ward. The catch for summoning spirits is that you can only summon them once and you can only summon one spirit. So once they die, they're gone for the remainder of that fight. Your last option is really dependent on where the boss fight is and if you're allowed to call it in and that's your Spectral Steed Torrent. All of these options changes the pacing of the game by a lot. Now when I went through half of the game, I went through without summoning because I forgot I could and I went through 60% of the game before a friend informed me that I could tune my freaking spirits. With that being said, this game really takes a page out of the Dark Souls 2 playbook when it comes to the enemy gank fights. When enemies swarm you, they can be relentless. In mines and dungeons, if you try to run, it seems like there's no escape sometimes. However, there are too many options to balance out the playing field. Some of those options I've already listed. One other option to topple this game is Rot. Rot and Bleed seem to stack the damage pool higher than normal. Rot by itself is a different monster, and if you've defeated the decaying Exikes and opened up the Dragon Cathedral, you can unlock the most OP Rot spell in the game. See how many options they added in this game to help balance the challenges out? I can't name them all. 
Now, before this recording, I know they nerfed some things, and I'm not sure what those things are, but I didn't notice a change at all. Your level of challenge of this game depends on what you choose to do, whether it's the attributes and the weapons or the spirits you decide to level up, or what weapons or spells you decided to carry. What build are you trying to run through the game with? Your strategies for fights, all of it is on you, with the exception of one boss, but we won't talk about her right now. The controls for this game are very convenient with the exception of one thing. Every time I wanted to double hand my weapon, I felt like I was putting in a cheat code. Everything else was easy access. The typical soul style menu is great, but adding a menu that fills the screen to reach your equipment, inventory, or your crafting menu was great. It beat having a small box on your screen where you could barely see what you're selecting. They also added extra slots on the right side, but I see them as pointless to have. Even when you sit at a grace site, having the ability to not only level up, but allot your flasks and upgrade them is so much better than the previous systems. The mechanics, however, are another story. While this game moves at a faster pace, I can't tell you how frustrating it is to know that you're going to get hit by an enemy because you're caught in the animation of a previous attack. Pairing, while not different from a Souls title, is a tad more complex as well, but only because the timing for enemy attacks is so different. Some of the things that I'm talking about may seem like minor nitpicks, but they can really make the difference for enemy encounters. All in all, I still give From Software the credit they are due for making the changes they did. What would a From Software title be without what they're really known for, which are their signature bosses? As usual, there are many unique main and mini bosses to fight, and most of them have their own unique style of fighting. Once again, they pulled a page from Dark Souls 2 and went with quantity, and with the exception of a few repeat bosses, they added the quality to match. With a world so vast, they put 88 bosses in total, which are ready to wreck you. I didn't have any issues with the hitboxes, even though in some of the fights I would have loved to blame that. I got hit fair and square and I could do the same. Strategizing is heavily emphasized with the bosses in this game. For some, one wrong move could get you hooked into combos that could take you out the second you step into the arena. Timing. Timing is key, because the first half of the game leaves you with bosses with horribly delayed attacks, and when you get to the fast-moving enemies, it can leave you overwhelmed by how fast they are. Some throw in those super slow delayed attacks with super fast attacks, and you'll never see either one coming. All I have to say is great job with keeping me on my toes through every fight I encountered from software. What is there to be said about the graphics in Elden Ring? I have a bias in From Software titles with the exceptions of Dark Souls 1 and 2 when it comes to this subject. There were a few glitches here and there, but I have no complaints or objections other than that. Now, I've heard it said that if you're playing on the previous gen consoles, you run into more hiccups graphically and performance wise. If you've experienced those, let me know in the comments. The one thing from software always nails, and I don't care what game you're playing, is the scenery. I can't stand Dark Souls 2, and even that game had some amazing scenes in it. Elden Ring, though, is on steroids with the landscaping, though. The visuals from the phantom tree to the vast oceans and even the underground areas are amazing. The eternal city of Nacron looks absolutely stunning. There are so many dungeons and mines and cave systems to explore, and there's never a single aspect where I was not visually captivated, except maybe the sewer systems. Other than that, this game captures some of the greatest imaginary workings of From Software of all time. Now we've come to the verdict and I think it's pretty obvious what it is. I recommend immediate purchase if you haven't already. The truth is that because I have such a bias with From Software games, I'll probably always recommend immediate purchase to anyone. Now there are some things I didn't cover that I will be saving for another Elden Ring video. 
like how runes work, the many recipe books that you can collect, the items that can be created, PvP, summoning, collecting materials, and so much more. This game is just that big that I have so much to talk about and not a lot of time to talk about them. So I'll have more videos in the near future covering these topics. That's it for today though. Again, if you want to help grow the channel, like and subscribe. And if you want to support my Twitch or Patreon, check out the links in the description below. I'm really interested to see what you all thought of Elden Ring, so leave a comment below. I may even do a video on some of the critiques you all have. Until then, you all be easy and I'll see you next time.